Diese Suzuki Baleno ist heute ein Auto geführt und auch full review. Your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas right here. And this car here, it does not look that spectacular from the outside and you know I'm keeping up to the promise also to show you some more budget cars because it's also what the car world is all about. A lot of people don't want to spend so much money on cars. This is one possibility here and we're going to find out. Is it a small car or a compact car? Mm, maybe something in between. This car has more to hold than it promises from the exterior. Some really interesting things I can tell you. Now in full HD, full screen and full length. On Autogefühl, let's go! The Suzuki Baleno shows a very unspectacular but friendly face. You see it right here like this, smile. And what is nicely done is that the front grille here, the chrome line, leads over to the headlights, which you can also get with Xenon. That's optional, standard would be halogen. Four meters or 13 foot one is the length of this vehicle. And is it a small car or is it a compact car? It's exactly something in between with the flanks. That makes it very interesting from the concept. Alloys 15 or 16 inch, and this one here, so we also have the higher trim level, 16 inch in a two color scheme. Design wise, a very conservative layout also in the side profile. Just here, this shoulder line, this design element makes it a little bit stronger in the rear, and also the rear window you see is rather flat that will lose some space on the inside but it's rather a design element and also price wise for example in germany it starts about 40,000 euros it will be cheaper in other markets but that's again from a price higher than the small car segment lower than the compact car segment and the rear a lot of design mix is happening here something um, Rear view camera is placed right there, then we got this chrome lip, see the flat window, then the rather bulky rear. I'm a little bit puzzled about this round taillights, also in a conservative style. So I think this is the weakest point here. It seems like they couldn't really decide what to do. But then again, it's not really screaming out, also remain the rather conservative style. Car key, simple, elegant, easy to control, big knobs. Also, keyless entry is available. And car is complaining at the moment because the ignition is still on. Door closing sound, I would say solid. Then the first look at the interior. Inside of the doors here with the gloss, um, I think it's a good solution. And then this hard plastic you can see is prone to scratches right there. Auto window holders just for the driver side. Everything here is hard plastic, but I mean, it also supposed to be a budget car. But I mean, something like this here is also nice. I mean, the basic fabric sees with two structures, and I mean, they offer good, got good climate comfort and also enough side support. Steering wheel with multifunctional controls here, for example, also Bluetooth cancel, pick up the phone and so. Blue background for the instruments, two more deals to that. What is really not that nice? If you look at the floor mat, this white tissue, I would, I would call it, this is really there to show you some warning signs for the fixations, you know, for the, for the anchor points of the floor mat. I mean, what the hell? Why can't they hide it or put it on the other side? That's 
strange thing. Do you want to see that each time when you get in the car? Let's get inside. So, standard seating position, I would call it, and you do feel it's something between small and compact segment. You have a little bit more space than in a small car, but a little bit less than in a compact car. And um, you know what is um, what is remarkable is headroom wise, it's basically okay. I'm on my 86 or 6 with one. If you not subscribed yet to Auto Gefühl, but then again, if I'm sitting upright and look to the front. I'm somehow halfway inside the, the roof already, so there you can see it's not really sought for the tallest persons. Other than that, it's relatively normal and comfortable on the seats. Also control to pump it up your and the back part of the seat can be adjusted like this. And steering wheel is also nice in all directions so you can really very well adjust that to your seating position. So the cockpit overview. Most of the functions are hidden in the infotainment screen. More details to that soon. So everything else is kept relatively clean. That's good. Also the front design from the exterior is repeated on the interior. I like that. On the other hand this looks you know a little bit 90s I would say. So it doesn't look that modern, but the infotainment system gives you a good overview. That's I can tell you so far. Steering wheel, as I said earlier, pretty standard. I mean, okay, and the build quality is basically okay. I mean, we got hard plastic here, but it looks quite okay. Old school style buttons, also the turning indicators and stuff. So there's not not too much to moan about. It's nothing spectacular, but definitely cleaned up due to this infotainment unit for sure. Bluetooth is from standard and option you can get this 8 inch screen then which also offers more function. 12 volt power supply and also the USB port. You can charge your phone or also use that one here for the Apple CarPlay connection. Then this cargo space in the front can be split. Um, then you have a big space for you. For your smartphone, for example, that would work. Or leave this splitter to have beverage holders right there in the front. Glove box. Not sliding down, but I mean, it's not an expensive car. Reasonable space inside. The optional seat heating can be accessed right here. Then middle console you see a little bit loose, so this is where it lacks a little bit in build quality right there. And just small space inside this armrest cover right there. Still manual handbrake. Instruments, left side RPM, right side speed. In the middle one we have a little digital screen, for example, for the consumption, which is always relatively low. Infotainment system, the optional big one. I'm really satisfied with it because it's not too complicated. Four basic apps phone we have Bluetooth for example just easy connection then streaming your music or using the phone that is what I would recommend then the radio choice you can change the volume right here or also directly the steering wheel for the driver and here you can also go to media and then pick the Bluetooth source for your streaming music then the GPS has good reaction times so you can also zoom in and out like in the smartphone and modern view and then this one here would be the last option and I can plug in the phone this is for the CarPlay or Android um, auto connection and this works also pretty flawlessly because it immediately pops up you don't have to install anything and then you have the, your phone mirrored right here I would generally still recommend just a Bluetooth connection. You don't really need the CarPlay stuff. But, I mean, this car has everything that you might want and nothing more. And I think that's a very important thing. What about the rear? And this will be very interesting because now it plays an effect that we have this segment mix. Um, headroom wise, mm, you know, if I don't <laughs> stretch. Uh, you know, 
all my lumbar parts. That's okay. I mean, but yeah, above 118 meters or above six foot gets close. But from knee room, this is really good. And you know, it's only four meters or 13 foot one in length. That's a good result. So overall, a very good package this car has. So if the adults don't um, really stretch uh, <laughs> their backs, then that's still okay. And you can travel with four adults here for sure. Maybe even a fifth here in the middle. I mean, the cloth surface is relatively soft. You don't sit too high in the middle part. Could also work with five people. Mm, not the most comfortable part for the middle person, but other than that, I mean, it's a very really good result here for the rear. There's no middle armrest, but I mean, we can also leave that out. And you can already flip the seats from here, and this is also the only solution. Top tether is on the back of the seat, and Isofix anchor points on the lower parts, so you can also very well put two child seats on the outer parts. And what's left in the trunk? Well, not too much. So, you see, a small trolley, small suitcase does still fit in there. This cover here, you have to be careful if you touch it here. You see this one here? This scratch was done right here, so you have to be careful. It's not the best solution, also too hard. And, um, well, you can put that whole stuff out, of course. That is possible, and then you can better also see and better access the flipping mechanism right there then that's the maximum space you got other than that you can also pull up this one here and have some more space underneath engines two petrol engines available 1.2 liter naturally aspirated engine it would be the first one with 90 horsepower or then this one this is not with four cylinders, but three cylinders. Maybe that's also one, two, three, this design called Booster Jet. This one is with a turbo, less displacement, just one liter. Also one cylinder less, three cylinders, but then more horsepower, 111. And this one is also one second faster in the acceleration, 0 to 100 kilometers an hour or 0 to 62 miles an hour. And it's really interesting. We will experience that engine later on. I can already tell you the consumption will be extremely low. That has also something to do with the new platform they're using for the Baleno. This car is so light, just about 1,000 kilograms. Welcome to the driving part. And you see, if you want to see the traffic light, I have to <laughs> bow down to be able to really see it. And that was one thing I mentioned in the interior review. It's not exactly built for tall people and of course the ceiling, you know, it's or the roof. It's really low. So here we go. And the funny thing is really that this engine, this small three-cylinder, doesn't sound too bad. I mean, it's really a rather refined sound for such a small engine. And also you don't hear this classic turbo sound. Bum bum! Traffic light race now. <laughs> mm, yeah, this really, I mean, uh, first of all, I, you know, wanted to, to experience the difference from the naturally aspirated to the turbo engine myself. And as I got the vehicle, I did not read which vehicle uh, exact vehicle I got with which exact engine and so I first thought oh this is the this is the 1.2 that a naturally aspirated engine because it's a rather sonorous sound it's calm to drive harmonic acceleration of course not the fast one not big horsepower and then I checked again and wait a minute that's the turbo engine hmm that's really strange and well, one thing you do realize it's the turbo engine is when you're on the motorway. I can soon show you because we're going on that motorway now. Um, then you really see a difference. And listen to the sound now a little bit. It's very interesting, isn't it? It really sounds good for a small engine car. 
And also the acceleration with the turbo engine here is pretty reasonable for city driving, also going on the motorway now. Um, for example here, let's do some third gear, 80 to 100, that might happen, let's go now. Blah, that's it. That's really okay, and even if you're, for example, at 100 and um, want to accel accelerate to 120, that might happen here in fourth gear now. Let's check that one out, 100 to 120. Blop. That's it. It's really okay, and this is the difference to the naturally aspirated engine you can also go for here. When you're riding on the motorway, then you can really use the turbo as it's, for example, also still possible to accelerate in the fifth gear. So that really helps. And so I don't have any problems riding on the motorway. I mean, going faster might not be the best idea because you already hear it now on camera. It gets rather a little bit loud in here. So this vehicle does not have the best sound insulation. But I'm really keen on that engine, not only because of the relatively good sound. Naturally aspirate engines, of course, the turbo cannot break. That would be an advantage. Other than that, the turbo is really good to be riding here if you're using it on the motorway, as I said. And the consumption, this is the crucial point. It's a very light car. I was really amazed, told you earlier, just about one ton. I mean, it's four and a kilo less than some comparable vehicles, which are shorter. Wow. And this also has a massive effect on the consumption. And you can already see it right here now in the middle of the screen. But I mean, that was now just a short trip we're taking. And you can really very realistically put that vehicle below five liters on 100 kilometers of consumption. That's easily that easily be done. And that's really a good thing. I mean, acceleration figures, by the way, is for this one just over 11 seconds, and the a bit weaker engine with naturally aspiration, but one cylinder more, four cylinder is about just over 12 seconds. So that's the basic difference. Well, riding in the city, the steering wheel you can already see it here while we're standing still is very light, easy to control. Of course, it doesn't convey you the most natural, sporty feeling, but that's also not what the car is intended to. Shifting it here with a five-speed manual. Optionally, for this one, there's also an automatic transmission available. This one here with the manual, I mean, it's just fine. Don't want to put the price too high with too much extras. And the shifting process is very smooth. So, no resistance at all. And that often shows you a good quality and I mean, so it's also fun to shift around, absolutely no problem. I also like the, the blue gauges, um, you know, that we got this blue illumination, it fits to the, to the brand somehow. I mean, in motocross they're riding yellow, but with the cars they often have a blue scheme, schematic design, so why not? As for the overview, this is really good because we've seen on the exterior steep window design, almost a box design some, some at some point. So you have a good overview to all of the sides. That's another big advantage of the car. And everything is really uncomplicated. So you just get in the car, start to ride, or to drive to say better for the car. And that's it. Not so much you, you have to care about. Mm, controlling the infotainment system while riding, well, you don't have a separate knob for the volume control here, but you can easily do it at the, at the steering wheel. So that's an easy solution for the driver that you don't have to reach for the touch control. Other than that, everything is really done with the uh, infotainment screen. And I think that's also okay. Um, I mean, yeah, vent control is still with the manual, so that's good while riding. And also, putting it warmer or colder. So that's, I think, a good feature for the driver, that you don't have to play around in the infotainment screen when you want to change something of that. That's for sure. 
here. And we're going a little bit right left. See you again. The steering wheel feels rather dead a little bit, and also the car is tilting around, so the suspension is very soft. We're used to that from um, from Japanese smaller and compact segment cars in general in their in their basis versions. And well, what's behind it? In Japan, you often have crowded cities and not the possibility to drive sporty, and so they also put the emphasis on that one. And I mean, it's just what what you prefer. If you I mean, if you really want a, a sporty, small, or compact car, that's probably not the best choice. If you're more keen on comfort and riding straight, that will be totally fine. Brakes are reacting spontaneously. Didn't have any problem with that. Take into account the weight again of the car. I mean, it's almost nothing. Probably you can take four very strong men and lift the car up. And this accounts also for the good braking power you have. You don't. It's just physics, basically. That's uh, an easy explanation for that, for sure. So we're going into another short autobahn ride here and also can tell you something about the assistance systems. For example, I got the cruise control. Cruise, putting it on the steering wheel, then another button I set it and also with the ACC here which is um, one of my favorite assistance systems at the moment for me is most important AEB, Autonomous Emergency Brake, Blind Spot Monitor in the mirrors and the ACC, the Adaptive Cruise Control, kept the distance to the car in front of me and it works pretty fine and interesting is here well, best is when you combine it with an automatic transmission. But here with a manual transmission, at some point it would stall the car. So below 40 kilometers an hour, the cruise control sets out. But very interesting is when I have the cruise control set and I shift, it stays. So we have had a lot of cars where the cruise control was cancelled when you shift. It's not the case here, and I think that's uh, very well programmed that you can still keep the set cruise control even when shifting, let's say from 3rd to 4th, 4th to 5th and so on. That's a comfortable feature, so I'm not braking now, distance is getting held. And so far this was working really flawlessly. So, and I mean it um, supports everything else I said about this car. Also from driving, it's really nothing spectacular, but everything we see, feel, experience is basically solid there's not much to, to moan about you know we had an interior part that we some parts we say yeah okay I mean that's not a high class build quality but I mean also consider the price and one of the key factors here as well so that sums it a little bit up is where we started in the front of this review what is this car is it a small car or is it a compact car? It's exactly in between lengthwise and the funny thing is that you do also feel that when riding. So it does not really feel like a small segment car, maybe just a little bit, just a little bit more. You feel there's more, more wheelbase, but then again it also feels and is smaller than a compact segment car, so you really get the strong feeling that the car sits somewhere in between and that's, that's not too bad because you can also get some rear passengers with you that's the advantage if you compare it to small cars but then again if you compare it to the compact segment car you can also very well cruise around the city and find a good parking spot and so on and especially with this one I had some, some tests about you can almost park anywhere that's perfectly fine because the car is really short and so this is I think, a very interesting idea and um, same was, was proven by riding definitely definitely so yeah again it says here just about five liters of consumption <laughs> yeah green traffic light um, only thing I realized when you turn the steering wheel quite a lot and then just let it go especially when you're uh, you know circling the car around somewhere um, you have to get used to that because I'm not sure what, what's causing this, but 
probably somehow the connection between wheels, steering column and steering wheel. So the steering wheel has this characteristic to jump back quite harshly. I mean, I can do it here on a very small scale. So if I turn the steering wheel in for fully to the right, then drive here, this, you see? And yeah, I mean, with every car that's happening, that's normal. But with this car, it's um, happening extremely fast. And uh, sometimes when you're especially um, going backwards, that may surprise you. So, but if you know it, you can then use it to make, make a fa faster process while parking in or out. And then you don't have to you know, turn the steering wheel all the way to the other round again. So maybe that's an advantage then if you really know it and know how to use this effect the car shows very interesting so this was the last small remark overall i think good weight ratio for the car solid driving performance not sporty of course but basically comfortable nothing to moan about not that good for tall people if you're really sitting upright <laughs> you see it like right here and i more sit in the roof yeah, and of course, with the, with the low consumption, that's, I think, one of the, the major things here. And the interesting feeling to have something in between small and compact segment car. And now the conclusion, Suzuki Baleno. It's really extraordinary because when you look at it from the outside, it's not spectacular at all. Everyone says, what a boring car, but this car really held some surprises. First of all, yes, the exterior is conservative and, you know, nothing special, basically. But then it's a really interesting own segment between small and compact size class with a length and that makes it possible that you can carry even tall people in the rear. Well, not headroom-wise, but at least knee room wise it was quite amazing interior rise was basically solid and also good overview with the infotainment screen it was really okay and driving wise good engines they are offering there very low consumption and the car is so light even some of the maybe well well-known manufacturers can learn a lot from well building lightweight without saying oh you know we are saving two kilograms because we have used magnesium on some part well, Suzuki shows it that you can also build way lighter cars and there's even more potential in that one. Other than that, I mean, driving wise, it's not the most fun car, not the most sporty car for sure that you have to bear in mind, of course. But you see, with a lot of pros and cons with this car, so there was more to talk about this car than initially expected. Hope to see your feedback now in the comments and of course, You'll join us next time on Auto Gefühl with the next full review.